I'm Chief Meteorologist Ryan Vaughn. Ice storm warnings have been posted for a good part of Region 8. Coming up, we'll talk about how much ice we can expect. Preparing the trucks for probable winter weather, why electric companies are concerned about the approaching ice storm. I'm Region 8's Lauren Payne in Jonesboro. Another batch of winter weather is headed our way. How are city officials working to keep you safe? I'll tell you next. Region 8 News at 6 starts now. Live from KAIT, you're watching Emmy Award winning Region 8 News at 6. Always tracking, always watching, always on. We begin with breaking news out of Lawrence County tonight, where a fire truck on its way to the scene of a big rig crash on Highway 412 turned over. Rescue crews from Hoxie and Walnut Ridge responded to the accident. Apparently, the truck was on its way to the first crash when the driver lost control and the truck turned over at the intersection of Highway 67 and the access road for Highway 63. Only one firefighter was in the truck at the time. You know, it just goes to show you that, you know, even the emergency services vehicles, you know, when weather gets bad, it's, you know, it's real dangerous out there. So everybody just needs to be safe and be careful of what you're doing. No other vehicles were involved in this accident. The firefighter did escape with minor injuries. Freezing rain, a big problem for motorists. That's right. Things are starting to get tough out there right now. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Ryan Vaughn. And Ryan, we can expect more. I guess that's the really bad news in this whole situation. Yeah, this is just the beginning of uh, what could potentially be a major ice storm across Region 8. You mentioned the roads. Now, if you go to our website at KEIT8.com, we have a link that shows you where the road conditions are deteriorating. I've been checking it out myself, and slowly the roads are starting to get worse across Region 8. In fact, dispatch here in Jonesboro has reported that the bridges and overpasses are starting to ice up. So if you were thinking about heading out, you may want to stay on inside, at least uh, through the overnight hours. As you look here, we've got freezing rain continuing from Leechville down to Black Oak. Paragold's got freezing rain right now. This purple indicates freezing rain also in Bradford, down to Searcy through Woodruff County, and then over into Stone and uh, Izzard County. It's starting to ease back just a little bit. If you project this over the next two hours, we're tracking this heavier batch that's back here. It's going to start coming into our southwestern counties between now and 8 o'clock. Notice it will start coming into Independence County, places like Southside and Batesville. By 8 o'clock, by 8.15, you're going to start seeing the freezing rain pick up a little bit, and that's going to be putting a glaze on the trees and on the roadways, so that's going to cause some big-time problems tomorrow morning. Satellite radar showing the moisture has been increasing as we've gone through the past few hours. That trend will continue through the overnight hours and will continue to see moisture stream in over this cold air that we have already in place. We have ice storm warnings now, and they have been extended southward, mainly due in part because the temperatures haven't gone up that much. If you notice, we now have White County, Woodruff County, and Cross County. They are now included in the ice storm warning, so pretty much all of Region 8 under that ice storm warning where we are expecting significant ice accumulations over the next 36 hours. Temperature-wise, temperatures are going to be the big thing over the next 24 hours. If we can get the temperatures above freezing, then it will just be rain. Notice in Blava right now it's 34, 37 in West Memphis. So no problems over here, but 30 in Jonesboro, 28 Walnut Ridge, 28 right now in Batesville. That's where the freezing rain is coming down. Coming up, we're going to talk about how much ice we can expect, and we'll also talk more about the road conditions. Well, as Ryan just said, Mother Nature is expected to dump snow and ice on Region 8. And that poses a big problem for electric companies all across the area. Josh Harvison joins us live from the newsroom to show us how they're preparing for the storm. Josh. Well, employees at utility companies across Region 8 have been working all day getting ready to respond to any power outages. Companies are hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. Utility crews have been working all day in preparation for the first ice storm of the year. And that's what we want to communicate to everybody is that, hey, we're, we're getting ready, we're prepared, and, and so we're, I hope it doesn't show up, but... We're here if it does. With several inches of ice expected to fall on Region 8, Monty Williams says the Craighead Electric Co-op is ready for anything Mother Nature throws its way. We're already prepared. Most of the time we're ready 24-7. Uh, some of the things in a big major ice storm is that you may have to have some more poles, uh, more supplies, you know, wire and stuff like that. Williams and Jake Rice at Jonesboro City Water and Light say crews will be working overtime to keep customers powered up. 
We are stocking our vehicles with the parts and materials that will be needed to uh, respond to an event. Crews Monday continue to trim trees, which could be weighed down by ice. They're hoping to prevent limbs from falling on power lines. What we do to get ready for any storm event, ice storm or tornado event, we make sure our fleet is in good working order. Uh, for this event, we will be uh, chaining up critical vehicles. With 17 electric co-ops in the state, the Craighead Electric Co-op says it will ask for assistance if needed. All of us are one big family and we help each other out anytime. And I know my boss, the, the president and CEO, he uh, has already been on the phone talking with folks and just touching bases to make sure everything's ready and, and things. The officials also say if you see an electric wire down, do not go near it, do not touch it, because it could be live. Live in the newsroom, Josh Harbison, Region 8 News. Thanks, Josh. So what do you do when the power does go out? Well, nine years ago, thousands throughout Region 8 were left in the dark for days following the 2000 ice storm. Hopefully, we won't get something like that again. But just in case, get a pen and a piece of paper. Coming up later in this newscast, we'll have some tips to help you when the lights go out. Plus, some important numbers to call. That's still to come on Region 8 News at 6. It is not just the electric crews gearing up for winter's blast. Local road crews are also preparing for the icy weather. The Arkansas Highway and Transportation Department began checking maintenance on their vehicles today. They want to make sure the salt and sand trucks are ready to hit the roads when the ice hits. Joe Barnett says a plan is already in place. We organize uh, at, at the beginning of an event, a snow and ice event, with uh, part of the crew uh, working the night shift and part of the crew working the day shift. Generally, we'll have larger crews in the day because that's when there's more traffic out and we can accomplish more then. Barnett says the Transportation Department has 220 employees. He says many of them will be working on the roads. And right now those roads are mostly clear, but that is changing fast. Region 8's Lauren Payne joins us now live from Highway 63 and Southwest Drive in Jonesboro with more. Lauren, how are things now? Well, first and foremost, Craig, right now things are wet and they are slick. Take a look at the overpass. We are at the intersection of Southwest Drive and 63, and we are getting reports of accidents, especially on the bridges and overpasses. So we are urging everyone to slow down. We cannot stress that enough. It seems like people are slowing down a bit, but all, all we, can, we can say is to just use extreme caution take time and certainly leave plenty of room between you and the car in front of you but of course the best advice would be to just use extra precautions you want an idea of just how cold it is check out these icicles on our barn doors of our lights i tell you what these things i can assure you get very very hot and it's no match for for out here it's very very cold the wind is blowing there's light freezing rain coming down so certainly we are encouraging people to get home and stay home if at all possible um, emergency management officials are certainly planning for some very busy days ahead take a look at some video that we shot earlier today this afternoon emergency management officials met with representatives from the police and fire departments energy highway officials officials with the city uh, salvation army red cross all in an effort to make sure there is a plan in place in the event that it's as bad as what we are expecting it to get oem coordinator david moore says they're planning for the worst but hoping for the best just to make sure that everybody's aware of what could possibly happen to each other and how we can support each other. We want our communications with each other to be very direct, very supportive, so if I've got something they need, they know where to come and find it, and we can we make sure that uh, we can put out the best help for everybody in the county. Now make sure in the event of power outages, you know where things are. Things like blankets, flashlight, batteries, because certainly with no power, it's going to make it especially hard to find those things. So get ready now in the event that things get a lot worse, which they are expected to. Real quickly, before we let you go, in the event that shelters begin to open up and you can't take your pets along with you, Northeast Arkansans for Animals is stepping up. They will help in the event that um, you need to get your pets some help too, whether it's 
NAFA sheltering them for a couple of days, or if you just need some hay or dog houses to keep them warm, we've got some numbers for you, 243-4362 or 932-1955. You can log on to our website to find those numbers. Um, but if you need help with your animals as well, certainly call those numbers. Uh, we will have much more for you tonight on Region 8 News at 10. For now, live in Jonesboro, Lauren Payne, Region 8 News. Thank you, Lauren. Even though the roads are mostly wet right now, that is all expected to change before the night is over. Before you head out, if you must, here are the numbers to call for road conditions. In Arkansas, call 1-800-245-1672. If you are driving through Missouri, call 1-888-ASK-MODOT. Many Region 8 residents were hitting the roads today and heading to the grocery store to stock up. This was the scene at Hayes Supermarket in Jonesboro as people piled the essentials like bread, water and milk into their shopping carts. Assistant Manager Garrett Combs says customers started coming in as soon as their doors first opened this morning. Today it has been at least doubled that amount for Monday. It's a good way to start the week off, but the high storms of course are never good. So. In addition to milk, Combs says customers have been stocking up on eggs and sugar, all the essentials to get them through this winter blast. Continuing coverage tonight, this just into the Region 8 newsroom. Sheriff Gary Tribble tells Region 8 News two suspects have been arrested in connection to the death of a Pocahontas man. Sheriff Tribble says the suspects were arrested out of state today. Over the weekend, the body of Ronald D. Cathy, age 51, from Pocahontas, was found in the Black River near Clover Bend. Charges are expected to be filed on those two once they are back in Region 8. Folks, in some parts of Region 8 got a rude awakening today. A 2.9 magnitude earthquake centered near Walnut Ridge struck just before 5 o'clock this morning. The U.S. Geological Survey says that magnitude is too weak to cause serious damage. To see maps of the quake and to read more, just go to our website, kait8.com, and click on this story. And still ahead on Region 8 News at 6. I'm Keith Bowles in Jonesboro, and I've got one question for you. Can you survive in case the lights go out? I've got the information that you need to know. Region 8 News. Always tracking. Always watching. Always on. We're out of generators, got a few came in this morning. Those are sold out as well, so we're down to the bare, bare minimum now. With icy weather expected to blast through Region 8 later tonight, people all across the area are gearing up and getting ready just in case the power goes out. And hopefully you won't have a power outage in this uh, winter weather, but you need to be prepared. You need to be able to stay warm and make sure you have plenty of food and water. Keith Bowles joins us now live in studio with some more tips. Keith. That's right, guys. When the power goes out in the winter, you got to kick in that survival mode. Now, some simple steps can keep you warm, fed, and safe. A heavy ice storm can easily bring down power lines, and no power means most things in your home stop working. You need to be prepared before the lights go out. First off, let's get a few things together. Flashlights, a battery-powered radio, candles, matches, bottled water, and non-perishable food. Now let's talk heat. You can use your fireplaces as usual. You can also use uh, fuel burning space heaters and different things like that you can use in your home. Make sure you have plenty of firewood or artificial fire logs. No charcoal fires inside. No, I wouldn't do that because it lets off poisonous gases and you don't want that in your home. So just use your regular wood, dry wood. Kerosene and propane heaters are okay. Just make sure you have some ventilation and... You probably want to keep a carbon monoxide detector. Uh, they're good battery-operated carbon monoxide detector because uh, those fuels burning, you want to make sure that your home is safe. Other than ventilation, keep the window shut, close off as many drafts as possible, and try to avoid opening the refrigerator and freezer. Food should keep in a full freezer about two days, a full fridge for about six hours. Discard anything that gets above 41 degrees. If you decide to go out and get yourself a portable generator today, here's some things you need to know and some accessories you must have. First thing though, keep the generator outside. No garage or carport use. It'll produce carbon monoxide that'll leak back into the house. For the average home, uh, uh, probably a 5,500 watt will run most all your necessity items. If you don't have an electrician wire the generator into your home system, on a temporary basis you need to plug in only a few things. For a good heavy uh, cord to run from the generator into the house and get you a uh, used or a breakered power strip and to plug these components into it. 
to also make sure you have a ground fault interrupter hooked into the cord. Now there are many more things you need to do before the power goes out, hopefully it won't. For a complete list, log into our website, kit8.com, and click the When the Power Goes Out story. Live in the studio, Keith Bowles, Region 8 News. Thank you, Keith. If the power does go out in your area, here's a list of numbers you can call. Craighead Electric customers should call 870-932-8301. The number for Paragool Light, Water, and Cable is 870-239-7700. To report a power outage, energy customers need to call 1-800-968-8243. And in Clay County, the number is 1-800-521-2450. For more winter weather tips, just log on to our website, kit8.com. And while you're there, we want to see the photos of the winter weather where you live. To submit one, just post it to our See It, Snap It, Send It link right there on the homepage. And I bet we get some of those nice ice-covered yeah. tree pictures. That's the thing so about pretty, ice storms. such a pain. Ice storms are so, it's such a, a nuisance, off. but, I mean, make for great pictures. Mm -hmm. That's Hopefully, the plus side right That's there. the plus side. It's awesome. overlining there. We've got freezing rain coming in now. You can already see it on Storm Track Doppler 8. It's been moving through. So far, kind of on the light side, but look down towards Interstate 40 off to the northwest of Little Rock. Coming up after the break, we're going to track that heavier batch of freezing rain and talk about ice accumulation. Stick around. The weather's next. Now, Region 8 Storm Team Weather with Chief Meteorologist Ryan Vaughn. Well, I'm sure by now you have heard that we have a developing ice storm situation across Region 8, and it looks like things are going to get much worse before they get any better. In fact, with temperatures hovering in the 20s and low 30s right now, and as we go through the overnight hours also, we're going to start seeing this ice accumulate across Region 8. Right now, we have freezing rain through the Boot Hill back into Greene County, Lawrence County, and Craighead County. Right now, it's at its heaviest up around 412 around Arbor. Leachville seeing some pretty good uh, batches of freezing rain come in, but it really picks up a little bit down to the south. Now, we're already getting some slick road reports out of Woodruff County, still some freezing rain there. But as you widen now and look off to the northwest of Little Rock, you see these dark Darker shades of purple. That is heavy freezing rain right along Interstate 40 from Russellville down to Conway. That is what we're going to be tracking over the next couple of hours. Here's the clock right here projecting this out to 815. There's the batch to the southwest moving into Region 8 between now and the 8 o'clock hour. I fully expect sometime between 8 and 830. Batesville area, south side, maybe even Newport, you're really going to start seeing the freezing rain pick up, and that will be our first little batch of heavy freezing rain across parts of Region 8, and that's going to make the roadways slick. It's also going to start glazing over some of the trees and unfortunately the power lines. Live look at Skycam. If you notice, here are the cars coming down that bridge that goes over the railroad tracks and over Matthews. You can see the headlights shining on the roadway. So there is water on the roadways right now, and look at the temperatures. Right now, it is 30 degrees, so this is going to start freezing up. In fact, dispatch has already said that bridges and overpasses are already starting to slick up. So we've got freezing rain reported right now at the airport. That means it falls as liquid, not as ice, falls as liquid, but once it makes contact to the ground, that's when it starts glazing over. So while we're talking about a half inch of ice, you may think to yourself, well, that's not much accumulation. Well, if you were talking about snow, it isn't. But when you talk about ice, that's a different story, totally different ball game. You start getting a half inch of ice that sticks to the power lines, it sticks to the trees, and you start seeing limbs fall and power lines come down. That's why the accumulations on ice, while they may be lower than what you typically see with a good snowfall, they've caused much more problems. If you look at the satellite radar, moisture is really starting to increase now out of the southwest. That will continue through the overnight hours. Here is one computer model that we use to estimate how much ice we can see. I'll go ahead and tell you, this is worst case scenario, but something that we do need to be aware of and watch. If you notice as we go through the overnight hours, this particular computer model gives us almost an inch of ice accumulated on the exposed surfaces. That's just by tomorrow morning. Watch as we head into the afternoon, picks up even more. Here's the main thing to grab from this graphic. The worst part of this entire storm, which is a national story right now, is going to be right here in Region 8 in the southeast Missouri. That's one thing you can take away from this. That's why the ice storm warning is in effect for pretty much all of Region 8. It has been extended down to the south to include White County, Woodruff County, and Cross County. So everyone... Everyone will see a pretty good dose of freezing rain. 30 degrees right now in Jonesboro, 28 Poplar Bluff, 28 in Walnut Ridge, and in Batesville. 
Look at Blavel and West Memphis, though. They are above freezing. 34 in Blavel, 37 in West Memphis. So they're still sticking with rain right now. Stormcast showing through the overnight hours. This pink area here, that's going to be freezing rain. Notice as it continues into our Tuesday, some areas may get slightly above freezing. I'm going for a high temperature of 32 right there on the border here in Jonesboro. So if we see any ice accumulation tonight, Hopefully, we get a little bit of a break tomorrow. Area of low pressure passing through. That is what's going to be causing our problems tonight. Freezing rain, 29 degrees. Half inch of ice possible, 32 with a wintry mix. Another half inch or three quarters inch of a glaze across exposed surfaces. And temperatures stay cold as we go through the next few days. Warming up, hopefully, into the 40s by the weekend. Glazing over the real That's the thing. Here. Some people say half inch. Oh, that's not much. Oh, when it's ice, that mm -hmm. is. Yeah. The roads I can handle, the power lines is what I get worried yeah, about. Yeah, be, be careful on the sidewalks, too. All right, Ryan, thanks. Stay with us. Uh, we'll have your sports straight ahead. Now, Region 8 Sports, where local sports comes first. Two wide here on second down and 12. Williams through the middle and goes in untouched for a touchdown. We all know about Carolina's stud running back D'Angelo Williams, but now the Win native is not the only Panther with Region 8 ties. Former ASU assistant coach Ron Meeks has now been named the team's new defensive coordinator. The move coming less than a week after Meeks stepping uh, stepped down rather in Indianapolis. The 54-year-old resigned last Tuesday after seven years in Indy as the Colts' defensive coordinator. Carolina will be Meeks' sixth NFL team. He was an assistant with ASU back in 1984 and 1985. Sticking with the NFL, Super Bowl 43 is set for Sunday in Tampa. Osceola native and former ASU standout Maurice Carthon going to his third Super Bowl. Carthon won two rings with the Giants as a player, and now he's the running backs coach for the Arizona Cardinals. Today, Carthon and the NFC champ Arizona Cardinals arriving in the Sunshine State. Thanks to a strong headwind, the Cards actually landing ahead of schedule today in Tampa. Sunday's Super Bowl is the franchise's first title game since 1947. The AFC champs also making the trip to Tampa today. The Steelers arriving safely as well. Another Region 8 tie with Pittsburgh. Once upon a time, Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin was an ASU assistant coach. Tomlin leading the franchise to its seventh Super Bowl. Pittsburgh's most recent appearance was three years ago at Super Bowl 40. Turning to college hoops now, ASU men's coach John Brady was down in Little Rock today. He was the featured speaker at the downtown tip-off club luncheon, and without a doubt, there was plenty to talk about this afternoon. In his first year at ASU, Brady is off to the best start of any first-year head coach in school history. Arkansas State currently sits at 13-7 overall and 5-4 and in Sunbelt play. The Red Wolves coming off a big win over Florida Atlantic this past Saturday, moving above 500 in conference action. One thing I always know is winning is good. Winning is a great thing, uh, regardless of the circumstance or how it comes about. Uh, and it was great for our team to be able to come back and win this game. And we'll see if the men can notch back-to-back -back SPC home wins. ASU hosting Western Kentucky at 7.05 on a Thursday night. On the women's side, the weekend was once again unkind to the ASU ladies. The struggles continue for head coach Brian Boyer's team. Arkansas State dropping its third straight conference game in a row. A 10-point loss to Florida Atlantic on Sunday. And now has the women shaking their heads, still trying to figure out what's not right. Our defense was great. I mean, we just couldn't get in there and knock down shots. So, I mean, we did great holding them to 50, 50 something points when they usually average 70 something. So, we just get it, got to get better on offense. We got the shots that we needed. We didn't finish them. And then again, it was kind of like South Alabama where we just could not, uh, when we had to have stops at the other end, we just didn't finish plays. Uh, too many. You know, second chances, loose balls, offensive rebounds. Uh, just when we were, we were thought we were going to get stops, it just uh, you know we couldn't finish those plays. Tough times for the women, but we'll see if they can if uh, they can respond on Thursday. That's right. Due to weather, the women's next home game against Western Kentucky has been rescheduled. It was set for Wednesday, but now it's been moved to 4:30 on Thursday afternoon, making Thursday a doubleheader. And that'll do it for sports. Stick around. More news and weather after the break. 
I would say tonight you have our undivided attention. <laughs> We're listening. Yeah, I've been off work for, what, 10 days, and I come back to an ice storm. Yeah, there we yeah. go. You take a look at radar, and you can see it. We've got freezing rain out there falling from the boot hill back into Jonesboro. Notice how it really picks up back there around Clinton. I just now checked on the road conditions back there in Clinton, and uh, they said it's only about 20% clear, so they're really Oof. starting to ice up out there. And that heavier batch will be coming in here probably around 8 or 8.15 into, let's say, the Batesville area. Right now, the roadways, they look wet, but look at the temperature right now, 30 degrees. Mm. So that's freezing on contact in a lot of locations. We'll continue to track it, and uh, we'll give you updates online and on air throughout the night. And everybody, okay. please be careful if you have to be. Not only on the roads, but on the sidewalks also. Right. That's our report for this evening. For the latest news of the day, including more on your weather, go to our website, kaita.com. And we'll have the latest for you coming up tonight at 10. Good night.